Logan, if you were me, how would you start one of these things off? I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. I used the word to describe Rangers fans that I'd seen banded around the comment section, and I thought it was just a generic nickname for them. And I guess it is actually, to be fair, I guess it is, but it's not a very nice one because the context behind it is not particularly nice to the historical context and stuff like that. So uh, I do apologize if any of you Rangers fans or anyone else out there was a little bit offended by me saying the word hun. But I don't know. Um, thank you for telling me about it at least. Uh, at least I know now not to say it in a video again when talking about Rangers. But if we are talking about going out with the girls and we call them Huns, that's fine. If we're talking about Attila the Hun, that's fine. If we're talking about, I don't know, just not Rangers, it's fine. But just not when it comes to Rangers. So do apologise. Context is everything. I now understand the context. Also, we've signed Gavin Bazunu, so that's a good thing too. Yep, so Gavin Mizunu is signing us permanently, which is absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it slipped under my radar. I had no idea that he was going to be a free agent come the end of the season. And uh, after yesterday's episode finished, where we won the league title, thank you very much, you love to see it, uh, I went to go and renew the loans of Anthony Gordon, who is back on loan this season. And I went to go and renew the law that Lelune. And I went to go and renew the loan of Bazuni. But when I got there, it said you can't do it because his contract expiring. So I just approached the signer instead. And he's joining the club permanently, which is absolutely fantastic. So uh, Gavin Bazunu, already the first signing of today's transfer special, which is exciting. He's been a phenomenal keeper for us, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do for us. The only issue with this is that uh, Tom Ritchie is going to not be our first choice keeper, despite him actually being the first choice keeper for Scotland. Now you can see here on the comparison chart that Bazunu just is miles better in every single area. But Tom Ritchie does appear to be Scotland's number one choice. They've announced their team for the European Championships and he's in the team. He's not actually in the starting lineup right now, but he has got four appearances because he has played the previous four games for Scotland and they won all of them. So we'll see what happens in the European Championships this episode with him. But Tom Ritchie, I do feel a bit bad. Like, He's our boy, and yet he's not playing. We've also got another player joining us from Man City on a free transfer, Carlos Borges. He's a Portuguese under 20 capped international player who plays on the right wing, who can cross the ball, can dribble a ball, has got a good first touch, is very, very fast, and that's kind of it, if I'm honest with you. But a free transfer, someone to be back up to Ben Knight, I think he'd be very good at what he needs to do, which is just run and cross the ball. So welcome Carlos Borges as well. Looking forward to seeing what he can do this season. But they're the first two signings coming into the club in today's transfer special. So hello and welcome back to On The Rocks. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode. We've done it a little bit of a weird order because we're already talking about two transfers. But today, of course, is the transfer special as we get ready for our first ever campaign in the Champions League. We go straight into the group stage, of course, because yesterday we won the Scottish Premier League, which is absolutely fantastic. Very excited about that one. It was a great way to win it. Obviously, we bottled the Europa League and we bottled the Cup. Luckily, we didn't quite bottle the league, winning it by a single point ahead of Celtic and Rangers in third. You have to go to the Europa League instead. So Rangers have a different season this year after being the Champions League, I think, every season so far. Anyway, as it is the first episode of a new season, would massively appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on the video for me. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here to keep up to date with all of the latest videos coming out pretty much every single day. The thing is, going into today's transfer special, I, I don't really know what what I want, essentially. Like, we won the league last season, which, in my eyes, means we have a very, very good team. And obviously, we're not good enough to win the Champions League or maybe anything in Europe just yet, obviously, being knocked out by Fiorentina at the end of last season in the quarterfinals. They lost the final to... Norwich. Let's double check this. Yep, yeah, Norwich. Norwich won 4-2 in the final against Fiorentina. So at least they didn't win, but they did get to a final. But for me, it is kind of getting difficult to know where to improve the team dramatically. I think this season we're going to have to sort of wait and see and just kind of see how things pan out in the Champions League and stuff like that. We also don't have a huge amount of transfer budget, only £3 million to bring players in and not huge amounts of wage budget. I think this season it's going to be difficult. Next summer, when we have all the Champions League winners that's come through across this season or will come across this season, 
next summer we'll have so much money to spend and it'll be a lot better next summer this time around might be a bit tricky either way of course i'm pretty happy with the team it's a team that's played pretty much all season long obviously bazuna's coming in so he's our first choice keeper uh, i'm very happy with the young back line that we've got they're just going to keep improving getting better so i don't really want to make changes there Campbell and Tamat Lumper are decent. We could maybe do with, I don't know, someone better in there. But this is the thing, like, Tamat Lumper, I want him playing because he's only 18 years old. Five-star potential is improving constantly. I want him to play most games to actually reach that five-star potential. Campbell and Ferguson swap around beautifully in that ball-winning midfielder role. They're both very good at it. So we can maybe do a bit extra cover in the centre of midfield, but I don't really feel like we need a first-teamer there. Obviously, Gordon's back on loan, which is fantastic, and he obviously got 20 goals this past season. I feel like we don't need to improve on him if he got 20 goals. Same goes to Ben Knights. He got 18 goals, but in all competitions, he got... Um, 22 assists, you can't see it's behind me, but he got 22 assists in all competitions. I don't really think we need to improve on that. And then Nisbet with 30 goals is mental. And then Shankland, if anything, is the weak link with only 17 goals to his name this season. And uh, not as many goal contributions, obviously, as Ben Knight. So maybe, if anything, Shankland's the one who makes way for a new striker. But of course, he signed a new contract with us last season. So... I don't know, he's worth £13 million. If someone bids £13 million for him, he's going. But um, I don't think anyone will. I think this summer, we have to focus a little bit more on backup players. If you look at the squad view instead, it's a bit easier to see, right? So Tom Ritchie will be our backup keeper this season. Uh, Mike Taggart was on loan last season out at St. Johnson, played well. I want to get him playing this season. Again, another player with five-star potential in there for us. Suter is a player that maybe we could try to move on today. Valued at nearly £7 million. I don't think he's going to play all that much. He played how many games? 23 games. Okay, maybe we'll keep him around. Not Suter, Jason Kerr. He's the one that maybe we should move on, Jason Kerr. Uh, valued at £4.8 million. Played three games last season. Potentially, we try and move him on to get some money into the club. Obviously, Brian Portier is very good. So, actually, the back line is pretty sorted for first teamers and backups, the back line. We can probably get rid of Jason Kerr and be absolutely fine with that. Uh, Lewis Ferguson, we spoke about him. Harry Storm and Thad McRae. They got 8 and 14 goals, respectively, last season for 18 year olds who didn't really play that much like they are great players as well so we could just do with some backups in the midfield or I don't know it's a weird transfer window I think we just sort of play it by ear and see what comes up and is available and what happens but the players who haven't got positions selected are players that are either going to go out on loan or I want to sell and the first player to talk about is Sydney Tavares a centre mid we bought in for half a million pounds from Leicester a couple of years ago mm, hasn't really developed massively he's 22 isn't going to get much better. He's all right across the board, but he's not fantastic. Valued at £1.2 million. And if we go to the news items, there's a bit on the table of £1.5 million from Crystal Palace. And I'm more than happy to let him go. So I'm going to try and push it up a little bit to two million and half a million. So we get two and a half million pounds in total, two up front, and then £500,000 in instalments, plus 20% of next sale. Suggest that they come back and say 1.4 and 500,000. It's, it's basically half, it's basically 2 million there. I'd probably accept 2 million. So I think we'll accept that offer, get him off and get 2 million pounds into the bank account. And whilst we're thinking about it as well, actually, if we do want to try and move some players on, maybe Jason Kerr transfer offer to clubs for, let's say 5.5 million, just a little bit above his value of 4.8. 5.5. Let's see if anyone bites on that. However, no one apparently wants him, which is uh, a bit sad. Let's try and transfer. He's wanted. It does say wanted by Lorient on transfer. Maybe if we bring it down to like 5 million instead, offer to clubs and hopefully they buy him for that. Uh, West Ham are making whoa, an £11.25 million bid for Yakov Suva, a player we brought in last season on a free and played phenomenally well. And now there's an £11 million bid on the table. The thing is, he's valued at 13.75. So that's not enough. Reject it. I don't want to lose him at all, so we'll keep rejecting that. If it gets close to like £20 million, then maybe we have to be accepting that. Just as I will be accepting this £5 million bid for Jason Kerr from Lorient. Uh, he's got no interest in joining them, though. Please join. Look, I... We want to try and convince him to join. I'm going to say we've received a fantastic offer from Lorient. I told you're not too keen, but we want you to go because it's a too good an offer to turn down. I'm going to say that to him. And he says, you've convinced me. Oh, you love to see it. So we are looking like we're going to get £5 million 
for Jason Kerr, which is a fantastic deal. So that does change things a little bit. If we get two million pounds for Sydney Tavaras and five million pounds for Jason Kerr, that's an extra seven million to add to the three million that we've already got in our transfer budget. And there's two players actually that I've got in mind that I want to sign that might cost combined about 10 million. I think we don't need one of them. We don't need one of them at all, but I'm desperate for him and I'll show you why shortly. First of all though, I do want to have a quick look at some free transfers who may or may not be available to us. And there's this great centre mid here, Julian Roberts at PSG, deep line playmaker, 19 years old, Really good determination, work rate, and teamwork. I'm also looking at the stars, five star potential. Oh, he's on 10 grand a week though, which is a lot of money. I doubt we'll be able to pay that. He's wanted by virtually every club in, in, in France and Hamilton and Porto. So that's an interesting one. Um, he's a midfielder. We need extra midfielders in the team. Let's approach to sign. Let's see what he wants. He wants to be a regular starter, moving up to an important player later down the line. I think we can accept that. Uh, he wants an intensive language course, plays a deep line playmaker. That's also fine. We can swap him in and out with Tam McLumper. Um, and let's get rid of that remove or improve coaching team bit. Suggest the promises. He's happy with that. Now, what does he want? Only five, six grand a week? Let's put up to six grand a week. I'm happy to leave in for now. A release fee clause let's pump it up to 20 million pounds i'm happy to leave a 20 million pound release fee clause in there it might bite us one day if it turns out he's amazing but 20 million pounds seems good to me right now let's get rid of the yearly wage rise and the unused substitute fee bring the appearance fee and assist bonus down to just the 1k because i like round numbers uh, but team of the year bonus can go up to 12k because he won't get that i'm sure and that can go up to 16 because if we win the scottish cup you can have the money suggest that he's happy first time of asking as well which is a little concerning maybe i should have brought the wage down a little bit but i've done it now hopefully he joins us i'll be honest i didn't even look at any other of his attributes i just saw these ones and thought wow psg wonder kid they let him go on a free he must be good is he actually any good yeah first touch looks good passing looks good. okay he does look good there's also this guy a czech left back with 20 determination 17 years old i mean i don't know what his crossing or dribbling's like but at 17 years old five star we don't know much about him at all i imagine he'll be cheap though i imagine he'll be fairly cheap to bring in yeah five hundred thousand pounds 50k compensation fee it's not much at all let's get rid of the release fee clause on this one i'm a bit more nervy when they're so young because they could turn out to be amazing and 8.5 could be a rubbish minimum fee release clause let's get rid of some of this stuff um and then suggest terms you want Six six hundred pound a week, lad. He's happy on that. That seems like a very good deal. Sparta Prague are also letting go of a seventeen-year-old striker with five-star potential too. I mean, it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? Although finishing of five to nine is not ideal. Maybe he's not quite so good. Let's not go for him. Sort it by current ability instead. And you can see that there's really good. In fact, if we tick the interested in transfer bit, there are lots of really good players who are interested in joining us harry winks for example wants to join us harry winks imagine us signing harry winks in the center of midfield how much does he want per week on wages he wants 19 grand a week we can offer him 12. i i don't think i want to pay that much for harry winks when he doesn't even look that much better than players we already currently have but at 28 he's in his prime and Hasn't been playing first team football for Tottenham for okay. Let's not go Winksy. Rob Dickey's available though at centre back, which is a weird one because obviously football managers seem to rate him and he's got some fairly decent attributes. But I know for a fact he's not a Champions League quality player, right? We need to start thinking about this a bit more, a bit more seriously. He's a Championship player at best for QPR, and QPR came. 11th in the champion that's not champions league quality in fact i think most of the players on this list are not champions league quality uh, if we're being honest with you. in fact no they're just not at all um, maybe the players we've you know got with potential hopefully joining the club they will be in the future but they're not right now so before we go on to the transfer list to have a look at some stuff um we want to try and get those players sold and we want to try and make sure these other guys come into the club quickly. But apparently we're going to face some late pressure to sign Robert and Pavlik. Um, hopefully no one else goes for them. They're the only two we offer contracts to. Oh, they, they, they are the only two we offer contracts to. That's fine. Yeah, and now Monaco, Havre, AC Milan, uh, Brasica 
and four other teams have made offers for okay we might not get this guy we'll be sad if we don't we gave him exactly what he wanted we were the first team in there as well we want him the most hopefully that counts for something all right what's this about as well jason kerr is rejecting the contract offer from lorient he literally said to us you've convinced me to sign for them that happened you guys saw that jason 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 um i mean we'll do it again right just keep offering him out and then we'll keep talking to him i'm a bit that's upsetting but fulham are now making a 8.5 rising to 11.5 million pound bid for suva we'll reject it because again it's rubbish we need at least 20 million pounds for him and of course he's now cross with us because he can't go to fulham so ferguson can you sort it out for us please that'd be lovely if you could can he sort it out he does because he's now happy to stay at the club you love to see it and now other clubs are bidding for Jason Kerr just at a much lower price than Lorient. And annoyingly, he wants to join this team, Le Havre. Is that how you say it? Le Havre? I'm not entirely sure. But um, he wants to join them. Jason. What? No, I'm going to reject that. We need to get as much money as possible for him. Transfer. Maybe it's not going to be 5 million. Let's drop it to 4 million and see if anyone bids that what is exciting is that the scottish premiership has moved up two places to ninth in the latest competition rankings so we've gone from uh, obviously 11th up to ninth the head of the greek and belgian leagues there and this is in terms of competition reputation so uh, it's nothing to do with coefficient points this one it's just how much reputation the league has and the higher it is obviously the more players want to join your team in a good division and a good league so this is good for us in terms of wanting to sign players I don't think we've made any progress this season if we go to uh, nation club coefficients we are still in eighth place right now just ahead of Russia just behind the Dutch and not too far behind Portugal if we have like a good Champions League campaign and Celtic and Rangers also do well in Europe this season there's a chance we could ever take the Dutch maybe even go into sixth place but what we have right now in eighth is one Champions League group stage place and one qualifying round place one place for Europa League and two places in the Europa Conference League what we need to really be doing is get ourselves into sixth place ahead of Portugal to get three Champions League group stage places that's what we want or two Champions League group stage places one in the qualifying round three Champions League places in total that would be a huge boost for us so this season we really need to be trying to be beating the Dutch the Portuguese and the Russian teams and the Greek teams as well to be fair like these sort of teams around us we have to keep tabs on those eyes on them and hopefully they will do terribly and Scotland do really well apparently no one wants Jason Kerr now just clubs don't want him oh this is so frustrating why could he not go to Lorient for five million I'm happy to let him go leave the club and he's happy to leave the club himself he's now telling me that oh but what could have been just why Jason I don't like this man anymore I don't like him. I never did, never will. But the loan market is now starting to open up. Livingston want Tyson Brown, who had a fantastic loan spell last season at Montrose in Scottish League One, um, scoring six goals, 12 assists in the league. Really solid for him last season. Livingston are in the Scottish Premiership. So this is a big step up for him. And he's currently a championship level player right now. They want him as a squad player. Well, I want him to be a regular starter. If we can lock that in and suggest it, which they accept, I'm happy for him to go to Livingston to play frequently. I probably won't end up showing all of the loan deals in today's episode on the ground, but it just takes, it has loads of them, takes a long time to talk through it all. But just know that lots of young players will go out on loan to other clubs. In the meantime, no one wants Jason Kerr, so we'll leave him for now, I think. Sydney Tabaras hopefully will be leaving us very shortly. And as I literally, as I say that, he's agreed terms of Palace and is off to Palace right now for £1.9 million. So we'll accept that. It just doesn't quite seem that Jason Kerr is leaving us just yet. Oh, but now clubs suddenly do want Jason Kerr. I didn't even offer him out this time. And then suddenly clubs want him. So Ludogretz, Slavia Prague, or Sparta Prague, sorry, and Basel all want him for 2.8, rising to 3.5, apart from Prague who want him for less. Can we negotiate this? No. Um, oh, this is the thing. I feel like we'll we reject this one. Maybe we just take the bids from Ludogretz and Bar. He still wants to talk to Le Havre. Should have spoken to bloody Lorient, mate. I, I'm so cross we didn't get £5 million for him there. 
Thing is, though, we got him on a free transfer, so any sort of money is good. It doesn't really matter too much. Just knowing that at one point we could have got £7 million a couple of seasons ago. He rejected that one, didn't he? You remember that one a few years ago? That was frustrating. He's now rejected, obviously, Laurie for £5 million. 2.8 rising to 3.5 might be the best we're going to get. So I'll accept both of those. But again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push it up to 5 See if anyone bids five again. Unfortunately, though, Julian Robert has uh, somehow decided to go to AC Milan and not us. I mean, I can't see the sense in that. What are they? What's Milan got that Aberdeen doesn't? You've made a mistake, Julian. So let me talk to you about two players that I I really want to sign. We have spoken about him before. Apparently, we've got no scout reports on him right now, but he is a very good player. Uh, a little small at five nine, but a CDM slash centre back. Willie Gray. Um, we'll probably wait until we get more scout reports back on him again to get them updated and stuff. But he's a solid young player from Hibs, uh, as I say, defensive minded player. And he's transfer listed right now for 5 million or 6 million basically there. I think we can maybe get him cheap. However, we've only got 4 million pounds in the bank account right now to spend on transfers, 4.21 million pounds. There's another player that I want that we do not need in the slightest because it's a striker. And we already have Shankland, Nisbet, Harry Storm, Thad Davies. We've then also got two really good youngsters coming through the youth teams right now. One's not been claimed on the Patreon yet, which reminds me to check that. Um, in fact, I did post it, but I've had no notifications from it. So maybe no one wants the, the really good New Zealand player that came in, like a six foot nine player. Maybe no one wants him or not. But we've got really good strikers coming through. The thing is, this striker at heart has got the media description Wonder Kid. And that oh, that means he is going to be good. Uh, it means Wonder Kid means he's got at least 150 potential ability, which is very high. And that is Champions League quality. Very Champions League quality. And he's listed right now, because obviously he didn't want to play at Hearts, for 7.75 million. The issue is loads of clubs want him. We don't need him, but I feel like it's a prime time to get into a Wonder Kid. Um... If we bring it down to three and a half million, suggest, uh, uh, we can't really afford it. It would blow our whole transfer budget on him. I really want him though. We've currently got the European recruitment package. If we change the world recruitment package just briefly, just briefly temporarily, uh, this now means we get some no more extra play. It was 426 before, it's now 426 again. If we sort it by, uh, not personality, media description, uh, it's just the one wonder kid that's available to us right now who wants to join us. If we get rid of that interest and transfer thing, uh, there's still no more wonder kids there. <sighs> like, it's the one chance we've kind of got to get a wonder kid. In fact, if we get rid of the transfer listed bit, just go to any player at all, Sort it by media description. Find the wonder kids again. There's two. There's a guy at Leon who might be interested in joining us. Uh, he's available on loan and is a centre mid and does look quite good. Uh, ask agent about availability. He would be happy to join us because you're in the Champions League. Work permit is likely. Transfer. I mean, we've got no scout reports on him, but I'm happy to just put a bit of £4.1 million on the table for him. And then if we get rid of the interested in transfer bit as well, these are going to bring up loads more players. But this is now, if we can scroll down, right, here are the wonder kids now on the media description. Oh, look at that, right. Uh, reports, get scout reports on all of them. What we should do too, actually, shortlist, uh, let's, new shortlist, wonder kids, and then go back onto, not scouted, the player search bit. Uh, go back to these wonder kids here. Get them all found. There we go. And then reports, no, lists, add to shortlist, wonder kids, indefinitely. So now we've got them all here, easy to find. Uh, sort it by value. Uh, there are some cheap ones, to be fair. I mean, a lot of them probably won't be interested at all in signing for us. But, you know, a young right back here, described as a wonder kid, currently playing in Serbia, is wanted by Chelsea and Man City. Well, quickly uh let's transfer make an offer although he's already accepted the contract where's he going who got him what what someone signed him transfer make an offer 
He's accepted. The, it doesn't tell me where he's going. That's really frustrating. Oh, it is Man City, maybe. It does say un, underbid from Man City. So maybe they've got him. That's a bit annoying. Well, with a left back, Kia valued at three and a half million pounds, currently playing in Mexico. Uh, again, let's go transfer make an offer 3.5 million. Let's see if we can get him in. Something tells me we're not going to be able to sign Wonder Kids from Man City, Barcelona or Bayer Leverkusen. In fact, most of these clubs I don't think are going to sell to us. Uh, and if they do, they're not going to join us because why would they currently want to be leaving players like Bruce? Why do they want to leave Dortmund, for example, to come to Aberdeen? We've not, we're not quite there yet. But with this striker, Jordan Ross, it's a great opportunity to grab a wonder kid. Now, if we get rid of the percentage of profit from next sale, drop this down to, right, what we do is maybe pay one million pound now, installments three of them, and make it one point, oh, we, no, we, we pay five million over those installments. Let's suggest. They come back wanting three up front and six down the line. Well, that's 1.5, and then five down the line, and they want this, they want this player who is rubbish. So you can have him. He's two and a half stars of potential. Have him. Suggest that two point nine seven million down the line. No, five point five and two million now. Suggest they're really not happy. They want money. They want the money. Two and six eight million pounds total. They've rejected that. Maybe six point five. Make the offer. I know if we pay it all up front right now, we can get it for cheaper, right? But we don't have the money right now, so we do have to try and do it in installments. I feel like today's transfer special has gone off the rails already. I just saw the phrase Wonder Kid, and now I've been completely distracted by everything. Uh, we're trying to sign, like, backup players. That's all we... I guess these Wonder Kids can be backup players until they get really good, I guess, but... They're going to be expensive. Southampton, Leverkusen, Wolfsburg all making offers for this guy. What are they putting the bids in at? They're putting... If I can click on the... Stop moving around. There we go. Uh, ooh. To be fair, they're putting lower bids in than us. So that's an interesting one. Hearts have come back wanting more players and more money. Um, I think we reject it and we see if they accept bids from other clubs. I'd rather not... I mean, the players, the players they want are not very good. Uh, this guy might be alright, actually, but we'll reject it for now. We'll come back later on, I think, as Southampton are facing late pressure... Arsenal have signed another wonder kid that apparently on a shortlist, so we can ignore that one for now as so we've won the Premiership. Just a nice little reminder that we won the Premiership. You're welcome. Of course, uh, Club America rejecting that three and a half million pound bid. How much do they want out of him? They just don't want to sell him at all. We're not quite at that stage yet where we can be signing wonder kids. We're just not quite there yet, I don't think. Uh, we've been given a work permit for Pavlik, so he's signing for us on a free transfer. He could turn out to be a wonder kid at some point, as Man City signed that really good wonder kid from, um, from Red Star Belgrade for pretty cheap. But he's on 54 four thousand pounds a week there it did say that and we couldn't compete with that so even if we did get in there early enough he'd always go to man city but at least we have this guy instead joining us on the 9th of june 2025 why why next year i guess it's at least 17 or 18 right that might be the issue okay so we've got to wait for this guy hmm bit annoying so i am 40 minutes into recording and uh, so far we've looked at some wonder kids Signed a guy for next season and uh, sold one player. We've not made great progress. At what stage do we panic and then start to offer Harry Winks 10 grand a week plus to come and play for us on the bench or something like that? As we're not going to get these wonder kids. I'm going to stop trying to do it. We're not going to get them, I don't think, as, um, as, as one of our players is upset about something. I'll ignore it. If I ignore it, it goes away at some point. West Ham, though, are getting up there with their bids for Suva. 15 million. Oh, at what point do we listen? At what point do we listen? Because they are very good bids. Oh. What would you do in this situation? I don't want to sell him at all. He is superb. Absolutely superb. And we got him on a free transfer. 15 million, we could buy a lot of players for that. A lot of players. I think, I think we hold out. We hold out because I don't really want to let him go. But I, I said 20 million earlier. I said 20 mil earlier. Jason Kerr's leaving for 2.8 rise to 3.5. So at least he's going. But we could have got a lot more money for him if he'd actually accepted other contracts. Let's prioritise centre mids. Let's prioritise that, okay? And, and see 
if anyone decent comes up with a nice bit of potential, maybe, potential-wise, we're looking at anything good, like a good 18, 19-year-old with like three-star current ability, five-star potential. I mean, this guy, Facundo Luna, he's not quite got the five-star potential, but he's a good centre-mid, ball winner, um, good teamwork, good bravery. He doesn't look amazing, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I feel like... Hmm. I don't think he's the greatest player I've seen in my life. There's nothing terrible. There's just nothing that great. Under 20 caps for Argentina as well. How much do they want for him? Because he might be a bit of a better option, a much more cost-effective option than the guy from Rangers, maybe. So 725 suggests that they want 725 million, not 725k. Okay, well, we're not going to get him. Maybe going back to the free transfers. Is that an option for us? Like, is, uh, is what's-his-name still interested in us? What's he called? Um, Harry Winks. Is he still interested? Harry Winks. He is still interested. Uh, wants to be a regular starter. His wage demands have come down significantly. Is Harry Winks a player we want to bring? I I'd be happy to bring him in. Like... In real life, I'm sure he played in the Champions League final, right? So he's got Champions League experience. If we can just bring the wages down to something a bit more reasonable, like 12, 8K per week, sorry. Get rid of that. Suggest. We can we can do this. We can do this. We can get his wages down. I believe in us. 10 point, how about 9.75? I think that's a good deal for Harry Winks, if I'm honest with you. Sorting it by player value, we don't have many scout reports on a lot of these players, but I'm looking at, oh, Marco Verratti is already going somewhere. That's annoying. He's going to a team in the Middle East. Uh, Rodrigo de Paul oh, is already going to Roma. That's a bit annoying. Thiago from Liverpool. How much do you want, lad? Anything? He, he does want to join us, though, weirdly. Wants to be vice captain. Let's get rid of that, because Ferguson's our vice captain. Thiago, how much? He wants 12 grand a week as well. Could we bring in Harry Winks and Thiago? We, I mean, it would be a good addition to have in the Champions League stuff, wouldn't it, right? Uh, who's that underneath him? Aribe, no, I don't want him. Gundogan's not a bad shout either. I do like Gundogan. I feel like Thiago is... He only wants a one-year deal. Can we get him on 10 grand a week, please? And a one-year contract extension after 15 games. That's sort of locked in, right? So maybe we don't play him much. He's like a Champions League expert. We've got no scout reports on him at all. Uh, and he's happy to come in for a year on... Is... I've, I've done it now. Oh, I love this. All these good players that are kind of half interested in joining us. Oh, Deme would be great to bring in, given he's a perfectionist and looks solid. How much do you want, Deme? He just doesn't want to... Oh, he doesn't want to talk to us. Gundogan, do you want to talk to us at all, lads? Approach to sign? He does. Important... A regular starter. Let's say that. How much do you want? Oh, 28 grand a week. That's too much. Christian Eriksen. He's, oh, he's already joining someone else. Where's he going to? He's going to Sporting. You hate to see it. Okay, well, we had some fun there. Um, let's not get too excited, but Harry Winks and Thiago might both be joining the club as um, the dear offer has been accepted. We don't need him now. Walk away. We don't need him now that we're going to get these two guys in on a free transfer. Save that money for someone else. And Winks is just immediately set to sign for us. Um... I've pressed accept. I don't know if that's... Is that... And Thiago immediately as well. They, these, oh, we can't even see them yet because they come through on the 1st of July. So we have no scat report on him. Oh, we, do, oh, we have no scat report on him. But we can see that physically he's not there anymore. But technically, mentally, he's all there. I've pressed accept. We'll see if I regret that on the 1st of July. So it's now the 1st of July. Players should be joining us any second now, which is great. But Yakov Suva has now gone from wanting to leave the club to join Fulham. And all it took was Lewis Ferguson to say, stay at the club, please, instead. And he did want to stay at the club. And now he wants to sign a new contract with us. Which I'm happy to give him because, one, he's a very good player. And two, that value will increase as well with it. So, discuss it with him. And he now doesn't want to ask for a new one because Yak I don't know what's going on in Yakov's head, bless him. Like, obviously a lot's going on in there for him. There's a lot going on. He's obviously upset about something. He doesn't know if he wants to stay or go. <sighs> Yakov, talk to me seriously. If you do want a new contract, though, important player, 
happy with that. How much does he want? Only like a little increase on what he's already on. Let's get rid of this release fee clause. Unused sub cheat fee can go. Eight grand a week up from 5.5. Clean sheet can go up. Appearance can come down. Suggest. He wants that appearance fee up. He wants the wage up. 8.5. I think that's a pretty good deal actually to keep him at the club a little bit longer until 2029 that's a long deal on a very nice contract in 2029 that's a beautiful contract for us I think that's a good deal but anyway it is the 1st of July now uh, Suva signs a new contract which is great no clubs are going to want him right now so we keep him longer for uh, around for longer and hopefully sell him for more down the line but here we go four players have signed and uh, I'm actually quite excited uh, so Thiago has come in does look great um is actually by looks of things the best center mid at the club so that is very nice you love to see it i just love <laughs> barcelona Bayern munich liverpool aberdeen i just love that obviously we know bazunu bazunu's come in we know all about him don't need to focus on him too much great player uh, harry winks is a weird one as well joining the club but i'm happy to see him here as kind of a backup player He's not as good as maybe you'd make him out to be. He is behind Campbell and Ferguson and like on par with Tamat Lumpers. So actually, Winks may have been a bit of a poor signing, actually. And then the one that I'm really interested in is Carlos Borges, who is the backup winger. And again, nothing special about him. Can run fast, can cross a ball. He's backup. Daley Campbell, also a weird one. I think we try and sell him as well for a million pounds. Try and get him gone. Ah, uh, more bids are coming through right now. Juan Torres is wanted by Lens for £4.9 million. He's got no interest in joining them though, so I'm happy to reject it. Uh, Juan Torres is going to be a key player for us this season. Still got five-star potential, still got good current ability, still looks solid. His crossing has still not increased from eight, although for an entire season now, he has been being trained on crossing and it just hasn't improved at all. So my scouts have been out in Brazil doing some work. And they've come back with a centre-back and a striker. I've just seen here some very initial reports. Nelson and Admilson. I love this. They just come back every now and again with a random South American player who looks quality. Now, we don't really need the striker. I need to keep telling myself we don't need the striker. And his actual potential, uh, his personality is pretty rubbish, actually, of a realist. So maybe that's not the best. What about Admilson, the centre-back, though? temperamental okay he's not got we can tutor that out of him i'm sure we can tutor it out of him he's got the good determination stuff though um he's only 17 trans oh we can sign on a free approach to sign is this on a free transfer we might not get him until next year like that other guy right but a free transfer yeah joins in january it says there end of contract in january um and it's a completely free transfer so we'll have to wait a little while for him. But this guy, why not? If it's free, why not? Let's get rid of these future wage risers, though. Release fee clause of £20 million seems okay right now, particularly when it's only a two-year deal. If someone wants to buy him for £20 million within two years, that's fine. Leave that in there. And actually, the wage rise over those two years will be fine as well. I don't mind that too much. We can leave that in there for a very short-term deal. But let's get rid of that um, and... Bring that down to like 3.5 suggest he's gone up quite a bit so let's get rid of that then how about four 4.8 how about 4.2 i mean okay we'll do it we'll see what it's like um i'm not sure how i feel about it but i've done it now i just love it that every now and again like i've, I've got some guy just based in south america doing some scouting uh, he's just there constantly looking around South America. Like last season, he came up with those Argentinian kids that we signed. This season, he's come back with some pretty decent Brazilian kids there. Oh, and what is quite frustrating, right, is that the Jordan Ross Wunderkid we tried to sign earlier on and Hart wanted like £8 million from us has gone to buy a Leverkusen for 4.3. Oh, but it is rising to 7.75. Okay, that's a bit better. And he's on 26 grand a week. So actually, even if we did get bids accepted for him, we would not get him because we could not offer him that sort of level of wages. So even if we did want him, he was never going to come to us. Oh, well, this might have just thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. Genoa are offering basically £20 million for Ben Knight, but he is not interested in joining them at all. Not interested in joining at all. It's only 13 up front, five down the line. I'm rejecting it. I'm rejecting it. 
I am rejecting it. We, in order to increase his value and to get bigger bids down the line, we need him to play well in the Champions League. He is the assist king. He gets the assists. If we're going to do anything in the Champions League this season, we need him. The young Brazilian centre-back is joining us in January, so that's all sorted. He's coming in to join us then, so that's good. That's another transfer done. I don't think... I don't think we need to sign anyone else. And maybe you might be thinking that's a bit mental as uh, a big bid's come in for Thad McRae. 3.2 mil. We're going to reject it because he's fantastic and we'll get more from down the line. But that's a big bid. Thad, you're staying with us for now. Oh, and Vontae Daly Campbell has rejected Sheffield Wednesday. So he's staying here anyway, so he'll be our backup right back now because no one is going to want him, are they? Maybe that's it. Maybe we do just sort of leave it at that. And because we have got a good team. And we have improved it, especially in the centre midfield. Maybe what we do, because of course, you know, we we don't quite have the budgets this season. We try and save as much money as possible. If we look at the budget, we've got nine in the bank right now. We're overspending on wages right now a little bit, which isn't great. But we've got a nine in the bank right now. We're going to get loads more coming in because of the uh, Champions League, obviously. So maybe then, we we just don't spend the money now. We've got players in on a free, which were very good deals. We saved this money for next season. When we've had a good account of ourselves in the Champions League. When we do really well, make loads of money from it. When we build our reputation up massively. Next season is the year we splash the cash. Huge, 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 huge cash. We're going to splash it on all the one. I think that's what we do. Because I, I, I'm struggling a little bit, actually. I'll be honest with you. I'm struggling. Like... We're kind of in that limbo phase where the players that we need to bring in to make us better are just out of our reach. Think of those wonder kids earlier on, for example. They're just too expensive and the teams we're competing with now for players are offering double, if not more, what we can spend on wages. So I think, it's a little bit harpy to say because I feel like I've let you down a little bit with today's transfer special maybe. No, I haven't because we signed Harry Winks and Thiago but we just haven't spent the money. It's just not been as exciting as it could have been or has been in previous years. But... No one else is going to leave unless a huge, huge big comes in of like £25 million pound plus maybe. Then we're talking something there. But I don't think anyone else is going to leave. So, yeah, let's leave it there. It's a little bit of a risk. A little bit of a risk because... Or is it? It's not a risk. It's not a risk. We just can't afford people this summer. We spend it all next summer instead. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. We are predicted to come third this season, by the way. Uh, 13 to 1. They're our best odds yet. I think last season we were like 18 to 1. 13 to 1 now is very, very good. Uh, with Harry Winks and Thiago as the best two midfielders in the team, apparently. Interesting. Interesting. They also think Fab McRae should be starting ahead of Nisbet, which is an int Nisbet on the wing. And Gordon on the right wing, which means no Ben. They don't like Ben Knight, the media predictions, even though he's our key player there. Um, weird one. We still don't quite have anyone, though, in the overall team, which is a little bit of a shame. I'm sure we'll get there at some point. I'm surprised Thiago's not in the middle, actually. That seems a bit of a weird one. But yeah, next episode, we will come back for the Champions League group stage draw. Now, I'm not entirely sure when that is. The Champions League group stage, which we're in, the draw date for it. Does it say when the draw date? Oh, draw date, the 29th of August. And we're currently on the 12th of July. So 29th of August... Uh, we'll come back, right, for the St Mirren and Motherwell games. We'll do that next episode, as well as the Champions League draw. Unless, of course, Champions League draw games happen. Basically, we're back on the 29th. We'll probably play St Mirren, maybe Motherwell, but maybe a Champions League game as well. I don't know. So, thank you very much for watching today's transfer special. Let me know in the comment section down below who you think the best signing was. And uh, I will see you, obviously, next time out, where hopefully your favourite signing has scored plenty of goals for us. Make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye. So I finish recording. Then this comes in. 26 million for Ben Knight. 26 million. And it's negotiable as well. It's negotiable. 18 up front, 7 million down the line uh, in instalments over three years. 
How high can we go with this? 30 up front. And I want 10 in one instalment. And we can get rid of that profit from next sale. Just just percentage of next sale. It's 20, 15%. Whatever they sell him for next time. Suggest. They've accepted that. 40 million for Ben Knight. I don't think we, we can't we can't turn that down. We can't turn that down. We can't not turn forty million pounds down. I don't know if he's gonna go though. Imagine who we could get with forty million. Oh it looks like the European Championships have just finished as some eighteen year old probably wonder kid probably playing with PSG. Yep, of course he is. Uh, wins the golden ball. Congratulations to you. Also wins player of the tournament. Um, but an Aberdeen player was named in the Dream Team. Tom Ritchie's on the bench of the Dream Team. How did Tom Ritchie get on then? Nine, nine appearances, like a semi-final. He had four before. Did Scotland get to the semi-finals? Schedule. Ah, oh, they lost in the quarter-finals. <clears throat> but he kept clean sheets on the international stage. Won a penalty shootout, then lost to Switzerland, unfortunately. But Tom Ritchie... He's making my life difficult. Because who do we start this season? Him or Bazunu? It's still got through Bazunu, right? Because Bazunu is still a lot better in terms of shot stopping. He's quicker, better communication, better in the air. But Tom Ritchie's done well. I just don't want to do anything now, though, until, until this Ben Knight situation gets sorted. Because if Ben Knight gets sold, we have to find someone quick to replace him. Very quickly. Oh, but panic over. Panic over, I guess. I'm not quite sure. Ben Knight's rejected the contract offer from Genoa. So, we don't need to panic. We can finish up today's episode properly now. But, I don't know if... I'm, I'm happy he's here, but I'd also quite like 40 million. I don't know what I'd rather have, though. But if Genoa are willing to pay 40 million, what would, after a good season in the Champions League, Man City be willing to pay? PSG be willing to pay? You never know. Hibs also want Thad McRae, which is an interesting one, as an important player starting for them. Now, Thad, last season, got 21 appearances, but only 11 starts in the league. Nine goals to... I tell you what, I think we might accept that. On the grounds that, yeah, Thad's a great player. We love him. We'd love to use him more this season. However, he's not going to get enough game time to develop. He's only 18 years old. And I think a season on loan playing every single game of the season for Hibs will do him good. They're predicted to come fourth in the table. So he should be there or thereabouts. He's not got any European football there. That he can just concentrate on scoring goals in the league. I think we say yes. I think we say yes to it. We send him out on loan. We give him some bonuses if he wins things there. Important player is his, is his agreed playing time, which is important. I'm going to say yes. Send him on loan so he plays the full 38 games in a season rather than just get 11 appearances starting 12 off the bench, stuff like that. But now that's all sorted, uh, I will join you back for next episode. So uh, see you then. Have a good one. Goodbye.